Well, that was worth the effort. Should keep us going through the winter, eh? I didn't see you put much effort into it. Oh, well, I would have, wouldn't I? If Derek hadn't stuffed my chainsaw five seconds after we started. Well, how was I to know there was a knot there? Wasn't well, there was a sign on the branch saying, caution, hidden knot, or do not use chainsaw here? Yo, you didn't have to let go of it, did you? you nearly took my flaming ear off. <laughs> Dear Blanche, despite my near decapitation at Derek's hands, the expedition to your place at Magpie Hill to cut up the fallen Macrocarpa was by and large a success. Little did we know the dark fate which lay in wait for us that day. Oh, what the hell? There's something wrong with the trailer rack. <laughs> Oh, hell, would you look at that? Oh, must have overloaded it, eh? Oh, don't look at me. I wasn't loading it. You know, I wish Blanchy had maintained his trailer a bit better. Which would never have got a floor in that condition. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, I reckon if we drive very, very slowly down the road uh, and look for the nearest garage. All right, come on. Yeah, uh, uh, Doug, uh, how are you doing? Doug? Oh, well, I'd be doing all right, Doug, if it uh, wasn't for this. For what? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, crikey. You sure made a mess of that. Hmm? Well, we didn't. It just sort of broke. Yeah, rather like your chainsaw, Barry. <laughs> Quiet, Barry. Well, uh, uh, Doug, uh, is it... Uh... Fixable? Mm, anything's fixable. Oh, oh by crikey! <laughs> no, I don't know how I got a warrant in that condition. See, I told you, didn't I? I, told you. I, told you. I it'll, uh, it'll need a weld. Fair enough. Well, can you do it? It'll take about an hour. Oh, well, that's well, it's great, Doug. Tell you what, if I remember right, there's a little hostelry yeah, down the road. We'll wait there and uh, have a quiet one. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, hang on. Hmm? What? We'll have to get the wood off first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to get the wood off. Well, oh, I can do with a beer after all that. Too right. Now, hang on. You chucked it all over me forecourt. I can't have a bloody great pile of wood all over me forecourt. Well, you could have told us that beforehand, Doug. No, no, you'll have to put it round the side. Uh, where round the side would you like us to put it, Doug? We wouldn't want to put it in the wrong place again, would we? Uh, put it by that part of stuff that's going to the dump. Derek, would you mind giving us a hand? Yeah, who gave you the foreman's job, Derek? Barry Ray. What's the matter with him? Oh, I don't know. Barry Ray! What? <laughs> what? You see what I see? Well, I see a rubbish dump. What do you see, On Derek? On top of the rubbish dump? Rubbish? On top of the rubbish! <laughs> it's an old table, isn't it? 
Yeah, but do you see what's written on the bottom of the old table? What? Well, see for yourself. If this is what I think it is, this could be the big one, guys. Chippendale. <laughs> Jeez, Chippendale. <laughs> Chippendale. Jeez, Chippendale. <laughs> so it seems. What, what, what's Chippendale? A Chippendale table. Well, that's what it says. A what? Chippendale table. Yeah, well, what's Chippendale? Here on a rubbish dump. Yeah, well, what's Chippendale? Not what, Ray? <laughs> Who? Oh, all right. Who's Chippendale? Shh. Only one of the most famous furniture makers in the history of the world, Ray. Anything with that name on Ray is priceless. We are in the presence of genius. <laughs> and a fortune if we play a card right. <laughs> Betty was killed because she was native. Her killers went free because they were white. Case closed. Why couldn't they just have their way with her? I've been so grateful that I didn't look Indian. I wasn't the only one he told. I need witnesses. Everybody knows. Everyone around here knows me. I'm famous. Conspiracy of Silence, Sunday at 9 on Maori Television. Pā kai ahi o tēnā iwi o tēnā hapū, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko te pūtake o tētahi kiriata pōpō i hangaia e Jolly Ann Davis o te rarawa, e āwhina i ngā mahi a tāna tāina a Catherine. O tāna koe ki te tari o te rūnanga zika pūtake i ngā iwi o te rau a Switzerland. Te kaia with subtitles, 11 o'clock every night on Māori Television. Uh, how do you say it? Say, mei igaren. In Italian, we say per tutti. In Spanish, it's para todo el mundo. What's ma tato? Shucks, if I knew that, I would be in the Maori party. <laughs> A new grassroots series <laughs> with stories from the motu. Koe nei te tautua tahi e whakākoa nā hau. Ma tato is for everyone. Sunday at 6.30 on Maori Television. Ki ora ma tato. <laughs> So what's it doing in his rubbish dump? Well, obviously he doesn't know what it is. But it's got Chippendale written on it. Well, obviously he doesn't know who Chippendale is or was. Hang, hang on, the, the point is, what are we going to do about it? Well, I I reckon we should tell him. Hey? What? Are you mad? Anyway, hadn't we better find out what it's worth first? Ah, good thinking, Barry. No, I, I've got a friend in antique furniture. Uh, excuse me, would it be possible for me to use the phone? Yeah, it's just inside. Ah, good. Right. Typical. Hey? Well, it's his round. Right. I don't really think you're taking this whole thing seriously. I mean, we could be onto a gold mine here. With mean, the price of three beers doesn't really shape up against the scale of things, does it? Yeah, OK. Well, how long ago was this Chippendale bloke, anyway? Oh, not a fair while. Be before you and me were born. What's so special about him? Well, I don't know. Uh, his name, I suppose. I thought they were Walt Disney characters. <laughs> Well, yeah, they were, but uh, this is a different sort of character. Chippendale. Yeah. Thomas Chippendale, 1718 to 1789, characterised by the use of Chinese and Gothic motifs, cabriole legs and carving. Uh, what are cabriole legs? I think my auntie's got those. <laughs> Just been talking to my friend, and he reckons this could be for real. He says a lot of the pieces were brought over by the early settlers and it's amazing where they turn up. Is that right? He also said that Chippendale authenticated each piece with a hot wire. Oh, look, that stacks up. So you're saying that that thing sitting on the junk heap over there could be worth... could be worth... <laughs> look, wait for it. According to my friend, the last Chippendale pieces to pass through Sotheby's went for between thirty and forty thousand dollars. Shh, pounds, pounds, pounds. Jesus. Oh, that's over a hundred grand. You've got it. And he's going to throw it out. Not anymore, he's not. Oh, my God. What? Something's just occurred to me. What? what? Oh, my God. What? He, he might be throwing it out. I mean, he, he could be loading it onto the truck as we speak. I mean, it could be going through the mulch of the dump as we sit here drinking. Come on. 
Oh, it's all right. It's, it's, it's still there. <laughs> oh. Let me handle this way. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, Doug. Give us a chance, you guys. I've only been going ten minutes. I told you it'd take about an hour. No, 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 not, not that, Doug. Uh, we just thought we'd pop back to uh, ask you something. What? Uh, what? <laughs> what? What is it you want to ask me? Oh, well, it was sort of just... Uh... Well, we were just uh, wondering uh, how often you... Take your rubbish away. Now look, mate, I try and keep my service station as tidy as possible. No, 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 Doug. Didn't mean this rubbish. We meant the big pile of rubbish sort of around the side there. Well, that won't be going till next week. Oh, thank God for that. What? Wait, 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 wait. It's just that uh, uh, the, the wood from our trailer is, 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 is right next to uh, it. We, we thought, sort of thing, that if old Doug's getting his rubbish taken away this afternoon, well, they might cut away our wood with, with your rubbish by mistake, like. What are you talking about? Uh, nothing, Doug. Um, oh, look, look, we'll just get out of your way. Yeah, yeah, see. Uh, you know that rubbish heap we were talking about? Yeah. Uh, it is rubbish, isn't it? Well, what does it look like? Yeah, rubbish. <laughs> yes, we just wouldn't want to get it mixed up with our wood. <laughs> God damn it, you nearly blew that. Oh, thank God for that holy shark toy. Yeah. Oh, that's for you. Ooh, is this rubbish heap really rubbish? Why don't you hold up a sign? I don't talk like that. Yes, you do. I do not. Oh, what about you? Oh, we don't want to get our wood mixed up with your rubbish. Now, uh, just a minute. Now, now look. settle down, guys. This is a time for cool heads. Yeah. Well, oh. <laughs> well what are we going to do? Well, my point entirely, Ray, what are we going to do? Any suggestions? We could go back and offer to buy it. How much? Well, let's be fair. You reckon it's worth 150? Let's offer them 50. Dollars? No, a thousand. <laughs> it's 50,000. We still make heaps. No, no, that wouldn't work. If we offer him 50 grand, you know, he'll know that it's worth something. Then he'll either up the price or refuse to sell it at all. I mean, that's psychology. Yeah, I mean, that is the way the market works, Ray. Oh, well. <laughs> it's still on, is it, Derek? Well, I don't know if I feel very happy about ripping him off. Well, of course not, neither would I. The most unfair. <laughs> I know. Why don't we offer to take the table off his hands for nothing? Say we're going to use it for kindling and to take it away with the wood. <laughs> then we would be ripping him off. No, we wouldn't, because to him it's worthless. We're going to have to pay someone to take it away. I mean, we'd be doing him a favour. No, no, I don't like that. I mean, the trailer's overloaded already. He'll twig straight away if we put a table on top of the whole lot as well. Well, I reckon we should offer him something for it. Well, how about a hundred? What, a thousand? No, dollars. <laughs> but how does that make it any better? Oh, Ray, don't you see it? He's getting $100 for something that in his eyes is utterly worthless. But it's worth a fortune. But not to him. That's why it's on the top of that rubbish heap. Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem moral, really. I mean, well, it sounds bloody moral to me. <laughs> it's a question of market forces, Ray. I mean, what the market will stand. How do you mean? Well, the market fixes the price. Yeah. We are Doug's market. And our upper price parameter is $100. Yeah. Sotheby's London is our market. And their upper price parameter is going to be fixed at $200,000 or, or, or even more. Now, what is immoral about that? Yeah, he's right, right. Look, why don't we just go and see him and say, Doug, you've got a priceless antique sitting on top of your rubbish heap ready to go to the dump, and how about cutting us in for half of it? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Ray. He doesn't have to cut us in for anything. I mean, it's his table. That's why we've got to get it off him. Yeah, what is immoral about that? <laughs> well, look, why can't we make a reasonable offer? <sighs> <laughs> look, uh, I suppose Ray's right, you know. You know, I couldn't sleep at nights if I thought I'd become vastly wealthy at someone else's expense.
Okay, reasonable offer seems to be the way to go. After all, I am an accountant. <laughs> so, a reasonable offer it is, then? Mm. Yep. Okay. How much you got in your pockets? <laughs> Good on you. So how much have we got then? Uh, four hundred and twenty-five dollars and thirty-five cents. Oh, two dollars change from the drinks. Oh, four hundred and twenty-seven dollars and thirty-five cents. <laughs> Hang on. I think we should leave the thirty-five cents out. Why? Well, we wouldn't want to insult the man. <laughs> Today, there are 12 sisters of St. John of God left in the Kimberley. I always say good Catholic white ladies. <laughs> Their story is intimately linked with the history of Aboriginal people throughout the last century. To conclude this invitation, the Bishop gives solemn benediction, calling down God's blessing on these primitive people. So long forgotten and neglected, they are now, at long last, coming into the fold of Christ. Sister Pearls and Mission Girls. 8.30 Tuesday on Māori Television. Daylight savings begins on Saturday, so remember to turn your clocks forward one hour before you go to bed. We would also like to urge you to install smoke alarms. It's a good time to check your batteries too. Just a friendly reminder from the New Zealand Fire Service and Māori Television. <laughs> This is Cook Islands, coming soon to Māori Television. So how's it going there, Doug? Well, I've welded it. It's just about ready to go. All right. Test. Tribute to country craftsmanship, eh, Doug? Yep, in town, that would have taken, oh, days. <laughs> Weeks. <laughs> Months, probably. <laughs> well, I'd get it seen to when you get back to town. You know, it should really have had a new axle. No, we'll put our faith in your workmanship, Doug. Mm. Well, you can load your wood back on now. Yep. All right. <laughs> the wood. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at that wood, shall we? Come on. Good heavens, that's not a bad-looking old table you've got here on top of your rubbish heap, Doug. I seem to have a bit of a thing about me rubbish heap. Oh, not the rubbish heap, Doug. No, just the table. So you reckon it's off to the dump then? Well, where else would it go? You know, uh, I wouldn't mind uh, having an old table like this. Well, what would you use it for? Uh Filleting fish. Yeah, I've always wanted a table like this for filleting fish. Yeah, I, I need a smoko table, you know, for morning and afternoon teas and that. Can I like to fully restore it and give it to someone as a, a wedding present or something? <laughs> it's going to be a pretty busy flaming table. Hmm? Well, while you're filleting fish, he's having a smoko in the middle of somebody's wedding. <laughs> oh, good one, Doug. No, no, we wouldn't try to do all three at the same time. Mad to try. Yeah, no, we, we'd work out some system uh, amongst ourselves. We'd, we'd probably cast lots for it or something. Well, if you're that blooming keen on it, you can have it as far as I'm concerned and save me taking it to the dump. Is that settled, Doug? No, that, uh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> that must have been a pretty valuable table at some stage, Doug. A yeah, pretty long time ago now. Oh, yeah, yeah, it would have been a long time, Doug, but, you know, think of the tales it could tell, eh? Eh? <laughs> think of the feet that have been under it after all these years. Look, I said you can have it, otherwise it can tell its tales to the dump. Oh, we will take it, but I think what we're trying to say in a roundabout sort of way Bloody is... roundabout, all right. Is that we'd like to pay you for it? <laughs> pay me? Yep. Oh, well, a bloke would be mad to say no, I suppose. Well, <laughs> probably just end up chopping it up for kindling to go with our wood here. <laughs> How much? We thought $427, GST inclusive, of course. $427? Take it or leave it. That is bloody expensive kindling. <laughs> it's a bloody expensive filleting board. <laughs> and a bloody expensive smoko table, come to that. I suppose so, yeah. Pretty generous wedding present as well. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll get the carrier, you know, to take it into town for you. It's the least I can do. Uh, no, no, Doug, that won't be necessary. We'll just, uh, we'll put it on the trailer. Hmm. On the trailer? Yep. <laughs> but your trailer's going to be full of wood. Oh, yes, the, uh, <clears throat> the wood. We'll just put it on top. Yep, right on top of the load. Yep. 
Now hang on. Now that trailer was overloaded when it came in. I can't stand by that world if you're going to put even more stress on it. <laughs> no. Uh, now, like I said, should really have had a new axle. Yep. Mm. Tell you what, Doug. We'll leave the wood here. Hey? <laughs> leave the wood here and just take the table. Yeah. That'll be less stress on the axle. Good thinking, right. That's $427 plus a load of free wood. Looks that way, Doug. No backing out now, eh, Doug? But speaking of backing out, I'll just go and hook up the trailer. Good one, Ray. All right, Derek. Pay the man. Uh, I think you'll find it's, it's all here. Do you want a receipt? No, no, no. The, your word's good enough for us, Doug. We'll just uh, <laughs> load the table. <laughs> Do you just want a hand? Oh, no, Doug, it's just a worthless old table. <laughs> oh, 150,000 smackaroos. Oh, mate. Oh, careful, Barry, careful. The, the slightest scratch could take thousands of dollars off it. <laughs> I don't know if we should have left the wood. Why couldn't we come back on Monday to get it? Ray, I think we should steer well clear of Waitaki Motors for quite some time. <laughs> Why, we haven't done anything wrong, have we? Nah, of course not. Well... We, we haven't, have we? <laughs> it's just that we wouldn't want any sort of grey areas to come up, would we? Especially when we begin negotiations with Sotheby's. Ah, uh, of course not. <sighs> right, we're out of here. Right. Stop! Stop! What? What? So we thought. We haven't paid him. We haven't paid him. We haven't paid Doug for the work he did on the trailer. Oh, dear, he's done pretty well. Yeah, he got $427 for something that was going to the dump. And all the wood. Yeah, that's not too bad. But what if he discovers what we've got? It's too late, isn't it? Not necessarily. Not if we leave a loose end, and that work on the trailer could be the loose end. How? Well, he could... He could claim a worker's lien on it, or, or claim it destroys the root of the contract. I mean... The Court of Appeal just loves this sort of thing. <laughs> Hello, Doug. Oh, no, the axle's not gone already, has it? Oh, no, 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 it's just that in the, uh, in the excitement of... Well, the, the, the excitement of, of getting the axle fixed, we almost forgot to pay you. No, 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 forget about it. That's no way to run a business. Oh, well, I got $427 plus a load of free wood. I'm OK. I'm an accountant, Doug. <laughs> a labourer is worthy of his hire. Now, how much do we owe you for the axle? I don't know. It's uh, about an hour. It's, it's about the, uh, we'll call it 40 bucks. Oh, that's very reasonable. Ah, I didn't seem to have any, um... <laughs> would a check be all right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and, uh, who shall I make it out to? Uh, Chippendale Holdings. <laughs> what, what? Chippendale Holdings. That's the name of the company. <laughs> but, uh, I, I thought it was called Waitoki Motors. Well, that's the name of the business. But when the old man set it up, he called it... Chippendale Holdings. Huh. Why would he have done that? Because that was his name, Ron Chippendale. <laughs> Ron Chippendale. Yeah. He's been gone a while now. Matter of fact, he made that table that you guys are taking away. He loved carpentry. Should never really have been a mechanic. So you're Doug Chippendale. That's right. And your father made the, uh, the table? He gave it to Esme and me as a wedding present. She hated it. <laughs> That's how come it ended up out there. Oh yeah. You were right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um... Wrong Chippendale. That's right. <laughs> Go all right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've got a contract. <laughs> what? 
Ron Chippendale. How many flaming Chippendales are there? <laughs> so there it is, Blanche. In one sense, we're now the proud possessors of a genuine Chippendale. In another sense, we're not. Oh, who's me? That's me. Yeah? You'll never guess what happened this afternoon. I'll tell you about it over dinner. No, no, no. I thought we might go out tonight. <laughs> oh, see you soon. Hurry. 420 bucks. 427, actually. And what about the wood? Aye? Aye? What about the wood? But we have ended up with a good, solid, workmanlike table to show for it. Aye? Aye? The trouble is, none of us can stand the sight of it. And we haven't got the heart to burn it. After all, that Ron Chippendale was a real craftsman. We wondered if you might like the table for your fishing hut, Blanche. Your mates, Barry, Ray and Derek. When the walls come tumbling down on you And the ground shakes beneath your shoes And everything you touch turns to dust You got nothing left to lose Look on the bright side When you're so far down The only way to go is up Remember every cloud has a silver lining If you don't 